I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Derek Alia, CEO of FutureSwap. Derek, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time to come on. Thanks, Ashton. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. You're very welcome. I'm excited to dive into the world of decentralized exchanges, AMMs, and what FutureSwap is working on with some new initiatives and the version 3 coming out, which I'm excited to dive into. I would love for you to kick it off for the audience with an overview to start of FutureSwap, and then we can dive into the details. Yeah, so on a high level, FutureSwap um, is a perpetual protocol that allows for anyone to engage uh, on Ethereum with our contracts, um, allowing them to create perpetuals on any asset they want to with leverage up to 20x. Um, this is really exciting. We were the first to create a fully decentralized perpetual um, about a year ago, slightly over a year ago, um, which helped kick off a lot of this uh, DeFi bull run, which was really fun uh, being part of that. Uh, and so we learned a lot and we're on version three now. We're very excited with what we've created and uh, we hope this next run is, is going to be as fun as the last one. Definitely. And I'm glad your team's been a part of it. And I know you had significant volume on FutureSwap, which we can dive into as well. Uh, I'm curious, you know, the timing obviously was right. Uh, when you were driving these solutions into the market, can you talk about some of the problems and the frictions, what was missing in the market and how you filled that gap? Uh, with perpetuals, was it just more asset types needed to be added into this decentralized world, or was it something else? Yeah, I think you know, as a as a user of some of the other centralized exchanges, we noticed that the market um, was moving in a direction where people wanted a decentralized solution, and they wanted something that was non custodial in the ethos of crypto. I mean, you're you're trading. Uh, crypto on these centralized exchanges, and it sort of breaks the experience of uh, what the whole point is. And so we wanted to make sure that we stayed aligned with the values of crypto and created a fully decentralized uh, solution for these these traders. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And you talk about perpetuals, and a lot of traders in crypto are just trading spot. Maybe you can talk a little bit about derivatives. Uh, how that works and what is the value for crypto traders in getting involved in that? I mean, I think the biggest value add is where people are very excited about a certain currency or a certain um, asset and they decide, hey, you know, I think ETH is ETH is really going up. I, I really believe EIP 1559 is, is going to improve things. And so beyond just what I can buy with my hundred dollars, I want to leverage this up. So I want to be able to take more exposure on an asset than I would be able to just over spot. And so that's where perpetuals come in. It allows you to engage um, in a into a trade that allows you to have way more exposure on an asset. Um, and you get to be sort of in full control. If it starts going um, against uh, you in price, you can always close out. And if it starts going in the direction that you um, are hoping for, you get to be in control and decide when you want to exit the position. Um, so it gets a lot of control to the user um, on the other side of that. Mm -hmm. Great to know. Thanks for that explanation, Derek. And I'm guessing having these uh, positions in there has enabled FutureSwap to, in the past few months, uh, grow to over $4.2 billion in volume. So that's an amazing number. Uh, congratulations on that so far. Can you talk about how you've been working with providing that liquidity and getting that volume on the exchange in the past few months? Yeah, so I think there's definitely appetite for liquidity providers to have high yield, um, to be on a high yield protocol. And one thing that FutureSwap offers is uh, a very competitive uh, yield uh, protocol. And so we enable sort of this AMM where people can put their liquidity uh, into our, our platform. That gets used by traders. And what's interesting is that um, on normal spot, um, you're not really using the full pool every day. You're using a, a, a fraction of the pool. In FutureSwap, we can be using, you know, say there's a million dollars in pool, we could use 10 million. The pool can essentially churn multiple times a day. So the, the fees that you're generating on, um, on your assets 
are, are far more. So it makes it very attractive for liquidity providers to, to come to our platform. And so that's, that's one way we've been able to be very competitive uh, to have the liquidity there for traders to come and, and take on these trades. Um, it's been, it's been a really interesting experience for us. Definitely. High yields are always great. And do you think that is one of the main reasons or part of the reason why many traders are starting to move to DEXs with AMMs over centralized exchanges? Certainly for liquidity providers, I think this is a huge, um, incentive for them. For traders, at the end of the day, so long as more liquidity provides a better trade experience, which is the really what we've been able to build with more liquidity, you have less slippage. Um, traders are more interested in having a better trade experience, right? So they want the best price execution, which is something that FutureSwap really focuses on, uh, making sure that we're very competitive against the other centralized exchanges. Um, and so I think that's why they would be uh, interested in this. But yields definitely attract the liquidity providers. Mm -hmm, definitely. And I know with decentralized exchanges, uh, getting that liquidity is important because there can be higher slippage if there's not enough liquidity. Is that an issue that you ever ran into with FutureSwap? Our, our slippage was very low, consistently lower than uh, all of our competitors. So we didn't really face this problem, um, which allowed us to sort of focus on other areas of development with FutureSwap. Mm -hmm, definitely. And is it mainly the high yields or the user experience, or is there something else that's driving uh, incentives for adoption for more traders to move from centralized trading exchanges over to FutureSwap? I think at the end of the day, traders want um, exposure on an asset, and they want exposure in a way that they can understand. FutureSwap was one of those platforms where it was fairly easy to uh, compare to another centralized exchange, like Binance or BitMEX, and, and go ahead and start engaging. And so it was fairly trivial. Um, certainly, there was some information around how to work with Ethereum and MetaMask and gas costs that, that did affect uh, usability. But overall, I think traders just want to engage in an experience that's, that's relatively similar to what they've experienced before. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And with FutureSwap, is it cross blockchain or are you specifically focused on Ethereum or, or are you continuing to expand throughout the blockchain ecoverse? I mean, we, we certainly love Ethereum uh, and, you know, there's other protocols out there that are very interesting um, that we've been looking at. Um, I think those are still in early stages and we'll mm -hmm. continue to explore um, those chains as they grow. We're not limited to Ethereum and we're definitely looking outside of the space for other opportunities. But so far, it seems like Ethereum has a lot of the network effects that we're looking mm -hmm. for. And so much of the ecosystem is built there, developer tools, other projects, users, that it sort of makes it a lot easier for us to engage on that platform than it does um, another platform. Definitely, definitely. And did you guys run into uh, gas fee problems with Ethereum or did you start utilizing layer two solutions or find another way to lower the cost for traders? Gas fees were incredibly high when we were launched. I think they were some of the highest that they'd uh, ever been on Ethereum. So our platform was indirectly affected by that. Um, uh, we don't have control over the gas fees of the protocol, but uh, you know, that's just, that's just how it is. Um, mm -hmm. And so now we're looking at other layer twos. Um, Arbitrum is coming on soon. Looks like Optim Optimism is also shortly coming up. And we're very excited about these platforms. Uh, we hope to launch um, as soon as they launch. So we're very excited. We think it's a matter of weeks. Um, and I think this will enable sort of a trade experience that's similar to what you expect on a centralized exchange uh, with far lower gas fees. So that's exciting for us. Very exciting. And I mentioned at the beginning, you're working on version three. I'm guessing that is a part of it. Can you give uh, a snapshot to the viewers on what's going to be coming in version three that's better than version two? And when is that sort of expected? Yeah, so version three is a totally redesigned version from the ground up. Um, we've assembled an amazing team of engineers uh, and traders to build this new version. And something that we focused on was making it as performant as possible and as cheap as possible. So um, 
before some people were paying upwards of a couple hundred dollars just to run a transaction because Ethereum was so expensive. And on this version, we've, we've really reduced the costs uh, in our contracts to make sure that you're under, you're far under sort of, uh, five dollars a trade or something like this we hope to get it down to one dollar which is on on a decentralized system which is pretty low especially on mm -hmm. ethereum so we're very excited about this um making it easier for liquidity providers instead of having to add uh normally two assets something like usdc and eth for example you're just having to provide one so just add your usdc you don't have to worry about impermanent loss and mm -hmm. you're off to the races um, so it's much much easier we also are able to have far more assets in this version, something that we've been waiting for for a long time. Um, so expect uh, a variety of markets on our protocol and also increase leverage. So those of you who want more exposure on an asset can can now engage in more. Mm -hmm. That's very exciting. And definitely on the impermanent loss side, I think a lot of traders that are moving into decentralized exchanges are uh, hesitant to put up liquidity because they are afraid of the volatility of the assets. So moving into stable coins is one thing, but not having any impermanent loss obviously is a huge advantage on top of that. Uh, so that's great to know. Um, and as well in the platform, is there a future swap token that you're being utilized within the platform that users also can help engage in the ecosystem with? Yeah. So our main governance token uh, is uh, FST. So FST is the token of the protocol. This is used to govern what upgrades, what other markets we're adding, any kind of token vote. So this is the, the way to engage in the platform. And we do distribute this to liquidity providers and traders. Uh, we want our user base to be the actual users that are using it. We don't want um, tons of outside speculators who have very little understanding mm -hmm. of it um, having a big say in it. So. We distribute these to users, um, and we hope to get a lot of engagement through that. Um, we were uh, one of the very first projects in the space to have uh, a DeFi governance token. Um, we saw this as, you know, this is going to be a thing with most most uh, DeFi projects, and this is a core need for the community to have a say in what what goes on in the governance. Um, so we're really excited about this, and it, we think the future of FST is going to be very interesting given that uh, this is a platform with a lot of usage and value. Definitely. And speaking of the future, what do you think, Derek, will be one of the key factors to success for FutureSwap you know, five plus years down the road to maintain and become uh, one of the top places to swap? Yeah, I mean, I think a great model for this is if you look at the excitement of something like Uniswap and how that's been able to really take on um, spot uh, exchange mm -hmm. and spot competition. Um, I think the same will happen in the perpetual space where you have um, these uh, these decentralized protocols that are really, really close to the experience of a centralized exchange. And if you look at the amount of volume going through these systems, um, it's incredible to think about how much value uh, we can give to the to the traders and liquidity providers. So I'm very excited about this. Definitely. And for people that are also looking at getting involved now with providing liquidity, with trading on FutureSwap, uh, and just getting involved in the community and looking for the updates for version 3, what's the best way for them to get involved in this? I think the best way is to come to our Discord, ask any questions. Uh, we're waiting for uh, Arbitrum to launch, and then we'll be uh, launching with them. We're super excited. So, uh, you know, the V3 is coming up, and if you have any questions, please please contact us. Um, yeah, I think that's the best way. Sounds great, Derek. I'll leave the feature swap links and the community links as well in the description box below for the viewers for easy access to that. All the best with version three launching of feature swap and the continued growth of the platform. It does look really exciting, and I'm excited for your team's growth. And let's follow up in the near future. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Ashton. I really appreciate it.